Silvio and this is part 22 of my 2022 Christmas Village full tutorial series. There will be no part 23. After this part here I will go directly with my final video as always around the 20 to 24 minutes where I will reveal what I have hidden behind those carton paper, white carton paper there. Under the notebook section, inside the cavern, I have the fourth and last feature dedicated to a Victorian era novelist. And it is even lighter, but I will keep the secret just a little week before the final reveal. Then, after a couple of weeks, maybe less, I will post a post-scriptum video on how I made that section. I started, if I remember correctly, the first days of October, completed two days ago, assembled two days ago, completed a little uh, two weeks ago, maybe, yes, I think two weeks ago, then assembled two days ago. So we'll have to wait some more times to see how crazy I went with that. Fourth section. Right now I will concentrate of course on the North Pole section. Um, I still miss something that is uh, still printing right now. I will not be able to show you. It is for the final video guys. Then uh, you can see that I have some wires here, some cords here, connected to the two stands, because I finally decided what I wanted inside those two stands. So, now they are complete, just need to attach them to the uh, T connectors and light them up. I will show you what I did inside. Then, uh, mm, some more uh, street lamps and then some walk path, but John Weber pointed me out a big problem with my Poseidon statue. Thank you. Thank you, Joan. Thank you for all your comments and the comments of everyone. Uh, she pointed out that with a street lamp just behind Poseidon in plain night, because I will also shoot uh, during plain night, uh, <coughs> Poseidon will be completely in the dark with just the shadows projecting towards the bridge, towards the, the water. And she was right, absolutely right. I didn't think, uh, I didn't thought about that before. So I had to get on the PC, 3D modeling, something different. I already have modeled the new curved um, canal fences, curved the canal fences, but I had even to make uh, version number two or version number three because I had to uh, correct that little problem and I think I will start with that. <laughs> no guys, this is not the final recap, not yet. But let me start with the problem pointed out by Joan Vedel or Vidal. I don't know precisely how to spell your name. Please forgive me if I uh, spell it incorrectly. So with the street lamp right behind Poseidon here uh, and no light in front of him, when I switch off all the lights and switch on uh, simply the street lamps or with just the lights from the building, Poseidon will be in complete dark. And just the shadows projecting uh, some shadows in front of him towards the bridge or down in the, into the water. I love that statue, Joan, you are correct, she is correct. So I had to correct that problem as quick as I could. And 
I went with a new type of fences, of can rounded canal fences, not a new type. I've modified once again the canal fences. Because Joan suggested, why don't you use some lights embedded in some rocks or anything else? Yes, this is absolutely good, absolutely correct. And Miriam from Miriam Manners do it in an excellent way with all the rocks and everything else. So guys, please also go get a look to what uh, Miriam do uh, on her channel, Mir Miriam Manners. Um, but I don't like them sincerely, as I don't like um, uh, spotlights there. They are not natural. Rocks with light inside are not natural. Last time I used one of them was in 2019, where right up there I had... Um, a little uh, three jumps uh, uh, waterfall there and then some rocks so done with some uh, cork wood and behind the cork wood some LED uh, getting light towards the uh, waterfall. Um, I, I had the, the only, <laughs> it was the only way to do that because that was a plain mountain, plain mountain, so it's ancient history. Then I never used that, that technique anymore and always tried to figure out a better way to incorporate lights with the objects I have at my, dispose, at my disposal or thanks to the 3D printer from this year on, I will try to make what I miss to correct an error I made. So let's go and talk about what I did. So, thank you once again, Joan, for pointing out the problem with my Poseidon stack. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know how mad I am, how crazy I am, how, how disturbed I am, how mm, I am plenty of mental disease, guys. So, I don't want to go the easy way. The easy way was what you suggested to Joanne and what do uh, other people like in Miriam Manners in hiding inside some rocks or wood or anything else, some lights or some spotlights. I don't want to go there. Uh, so, I decided to find a solution by myself and I spent, uh, let's say, two hours in front of my PC staring at my blank uh, screen because I work, um, I model with a blank, uh, with a white screen, so blank, completely blank. These are, this is a canal fence from Lemax, okay, standard canal fence from Lemax. Then some time ago I modeled also the curved ones, the curved ones allowing you or me, oh, by the way guys, if you want some of what I modeled, it's not proprietary, please just ask me and I will post uh, and I will upload the STL files or my models, but I don't know if you use Rhino 3D to model or ZBrush to model your organics, but I, I can share anytime, anyway. Um, so I went with this new design for the uh, curved fences, kind of fences that will allow you to get uh, not uh, to get around, not uh, not uh, ninety degrees corners, okay, to go like that, etc. But then. If you have a statue, hey, JJ, give me five, thank you, JJ. A statue like Poseidon I have with a street lamp here in this corner here, a street lamp right there, and nothing in front, obviously in plain night, Poseidon will be in the dark. But Poseidon is in the in, in a corner. In the last part of uh, uh, the the wharf of the pier, okay. So I have no place for placing a big 
gigantic um, street lamp, 10 centimeters tall, they are 10 centimeters tall, my street lamps, here in just some little space. So, what I did, I tried to modify this curved design here. And this curved design here led me to this design here, guys. Okay? Always curved, but it can also be used as a straight or always curved like it is right now and I have a right and a left obviously specular for getting from one side of the curve and from the other where I tried to enlarge a little bit one of the side pole there you can see that the diameter here is bigger than this one not that bigger but it is a little bigger than the um, main diameter here in order to allow me to make a pipe, a tube instead of a plain solid pool and allowing me to slide in a wire to get access to be connected to uh, an LED uh, it's not that big the difference between the two poles but it, it, it is a difference, but it's not even compared. Let me just pause for a second. I was saying that nothing compared to the dimension of this street lamp here. Please uh, notice that this part here will be hidden behind the styrofoam, so in reality, the street lamp are 10 centimeters tall, like this one. Okay, 10 centimeters or tall. What I did there is 9 centimeters tall. Okay, 9 centimeters, so a little more than 1 centimeter in difference. But this is 9 millimeters, 8 to 10 millimeters in diameter. Very big, very mastodontic. Okay, this one is, <laughs> is less but also very useful and it will not um, damage the point of view, okay? Obviously I went step by step, I didn't get the first result, okay, let's go. For example, I tried to model a first, uh, a first pipe, a first tube using a too little difference between inside diameter and outside diameter. Maybe I can show you closely. Okay, sorry for the camera. And it is not that rigid, it is almost like a straw, like a straw, and very fragile. It's it can broke, and the, you can see that the filaments are visible like that. So the first uh, um the first one went absolutely wrong because I needed to start with this one. The other parts were exactly the same. So this is modeled. Also, this was the first version. So a base, then these four elements modeled together, but it's not that good as a way of modeling because these. Uh, as uh, this is not flat, so because it is curved, so it needs supports and it will ruin the surface. Like in this case, here I had the, the, the supports. So I went with the second version as the base with the holes for the two poles, then each element printed separately and, and then assembled together. So these had no holes here. And this one, as you can see, I have some holes because each element is printed separately. Okay? So in total, this is one, two, three, four, five elements. Right now, it was just two elements in version number one, in version alpha, maybe. Uh, the new version of the curved fences is five elements, one, two, three, four, five elements, okay. 
as it is the new fence with street lamps. First tube went wrong, even the second one had a, a little better, I mean incremented with 0 0.2, 0.2 uh, millimeter, so two tenths of a millimeter in diameter and you can see the difference. Okay, a little more solid, a little more resistant, but also with always with problem here when trying to uh, to three D print this. And this is absolutely be printable without any support, so very quick, 10, 10 minutes, and it is done. Then version number three had this result here: very rigid, not uh, breakable, not fragile, and still the space needed for uh, passing through the wires plus and minus not my usual wires but i use them but also here the top instead of printing some plastic and then some transparent i went with the same technique i used for the frankenstein feature printing the top completely with transparent PETG, with transparent filament. So this is a cap, a top cap, uh, but also a lantern, it has the shape of a lantern, and it will diffuse the light. Also this was not done uh, uh, immediately, you can see that the first model I had was too too short okay too short and other problems with the supports so a big holes inside you are not saying it but a big hole here inside there and it was very small it is once uh, half a centimeter smaller than the one uh, it could uh, accommodate what i use it those micro led I think it is the first time you are seeing me using this, but I already used them for my fourth section, but it is a secret. I will show you how in a month, around a month, not three weeks, three, three weeks, let's say three weeks. I'm using those, I, I use, this is a standard um, battery powered, uh, what are AA? Yes, 1.5 volt AA, 3, 1, 3 AA 1.5 volt batteries for Christmas lights. And this is a classic chain, LED chain with uh, a fixed LED like this one, guys. Like, oops, wrong. like this one guy, so it is fixed. And every four fixed LED, one is flashing, classic white, pure white, bright uh, strip, LED strip like that, okay? So uh, what you have to do, you have to cut here, one, then use a lighter, some sort of uh, f uh, flame, to burn the tip, otherwise it is isolated. You can understand that if this wasn't isolated each time I do something like that, I will short a circuit everything and it will stop working. So it is a silver cover, transparent, maybe transparent upon some silver wires, but the paint will isolate the wire, so no problem with short circuiting. Then after you cut the, the LED and you burn the tip, you can auto disposal a micro LED that will accommodate inside even my first version. Uh, this one was the first version. Even inside the micro LED will accommodate inside my first version. Then I went bigger and then obviously inside here I have this little micro LED inside it. Less powerful than this five millimeters diameter 
LED, but it will bring light to Poseidon in this way. Uh, the final one, this was the prototype of the final design, bigger, taller, and then no problem with supports, just needed to be filed a little on the top. Those one not even needed some filing on the top, they are perfect like they are. Then use the some um, some glue to glue them together and this is the result with the T connector as always with my street lamps placed there ready to be clipped onto the uh, onto the uh, the main uh, street lamps wires and this is how I uh, find a solution for my problem uh, let me paint them uh, uh, I think black and if it is and silver as always as those ones okay yes black and if it is and silver those two then I will uh, connect them to the uh, to the rest of the layout and I will show you the result without those uh, street lamps here those uh, modified defenses those uh, Lamp fences, let me call them lamp fences because I haven't tested them. I hope they will bring the light, and I will use them two of them one not in front because I will ruin the view, but lateral sides like that, that one with Poseidon here in the middle. I will try this method. Let me just uh, paint them black and, and iridescent silver. Okay, guys, done. Okay, I. Oh, by the way, this is what I used to, to paint all my figurines. I also 3D printed some uh, hand supports for painting, but these they are not good for me. This is the best solution I found. Those are egg container, a wood egg container for breakfast, and they are very well suited for painting and uh, at least for my hand dimensions. So I use always those uh, little X container here to paint my little elements. Those are dry enough, yes. So they are a little dirty, but I painted so many things using those as handles. Painting handles, no guys. X container as painting handle. Uh, Yes, then never leave the brush inside the water. Uh, then I will clean it better in some minutes. Let's go and test those street, th those lamp, fence lamp or lamp fences. Okay, okay good guys. Uh, here we are once again in front of Poseidon. Let's test those new. A couple of uh, uh, fence lamps or lamp fences. Okay, let me connect those two street lamps there. I will also have uh, some more street lamps on the left towards the station, but let's focus on that. Uh, ISO is at 800. Yes, good. Let me switch off all the lights. This is the result, guys. Absolutely. Uh, in plain dark, Poseidon absolutely in plain dark. I don't know if you can, obviously all the buildings are also um, switched off so you can't see anything right now with <laughs> just two street lamps and no buildings and anything else. It is really in the dark, but the light is coming from this direction here towards you and it diffuses all along here. So let me switch on again the lights and then let me remove not this one, the central, not this one, not this one, but one, two, this one. And this one okay 
from this side here, I will use this one. Obviously, I will need to dig some holes, but I will do next. And from the other side, sorry for the camera, guys. And from the other side, I will go with the other one. Now I will connect to the big wire just for test. Okay, I know I have to hide the wires. Okay, the filament diffused the light, the LED are very bright, I knew that. But let's test with those new street lamp <laughs> fence lamps there. Let me switch off the lights. And this is the result, guys. So, uh, may I will uh, know the exact result once I will edit this video. But now... Poseidon is visible. It's a black statue, guys. It's a, a bronze statue. So the white of the pedestal is visible. Okay, uh, the the trident is visible because it is gold, but the rocks are black, and Poseidon bronze is almost a black color. But I think uh, this will th this is better, guys. And it's not disturbing that much. Uh, even those micro LED using, <laughs> they are very powerful. Uh, maybe less than those big gigantic LEDs, five millimeters LEDs I have inside. I need to fix the street lamps once again. But in this case, I think this is a good solution and it's not like having something that is not present in in uh, in real life as a spot inside a rock here i've simply modified and they are on the side um not precisely horizontal but a little uh, curved towards uh, poseidon and one more thing, I've oriented the LED in this way because the micro LED has a front and a back. I've oriented the micro LED getting lights in front. Uh, it's much more bright towards this side than towards this other side, guys. I can, I can assure you that. And using the filament, uh, uh, the PETG, the transparent filament to print the top of the lamp, uh, it will help me diffuse the lights even more. That is the solution. Joan, I know I went uh, not precisely with what you suggested, but please let me know if it is uh, suitable as a solution for my Poseidon, even for you. Let's go with something else. Switch on the lights. The, the stand that goes there, guys. This stand here, the rose and red stand, that was only powered by a couple of AA batteries like there. What I usually do is I use a rotatory tool, let's call it a Dremel if you prefer, and with a milling cutting tip, yeah, milling cutter, uh, I made a groove into the poly resin there. I haven't shown you that guys on camera because when using that tool with some poly raising it's like working in a dust very dense of powder guys black white powder i had to use a mask because of cutting milling cutting uh, a poly resin oh 
guys, it is so toxic and make a dust, uh, a heavy dust. Then I've removed the switch and connected directly the two wires, positive and negative. Positive is the black one, to the two wires inside uh, the hole there. Then used once again the cap to close everything. Let's test if it works. It's always a switch on, it is a 3 volt. I will use the same AC adapter I used for the two uh, lamp fences. And, oh, it is very, very, um, very warm light. It is a yellow, orange light, but it works right now. So, tested, okay, good. Let me place it where it belongs. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Okay, guys, I've connected the wire here for the jackal bladder there, uh, here, and I make it disappear here. I will have some snow all along here, and then it comes down here, and then hide somehow down below. But the um, okay, the, the two stands, I was saying the two stands. One and two. Inside, I have, let me take him out, here guys, I decided to go with some toss the ring, and inside I have uh, some uh, Almirage, the, um, the bunny, the unicorned bun bunnies, a set of unicorned bunnies, and I also have uh, um, a table inside with uh, some rings. Those rings are nothing else than rings used to hang some um, some tissue on uh, with some tissue and I've glued them together with some uh, hot glue and then I have uh, some here then some that have been thrown uh, there okay and from the distance and I also have an LED on top of there I have uh, one of those micro LED here. So this will be lighted on. Let me do that. And this one here has teddy bears, okay? As prices, I have modeled and 3D printed a bunch of teddy bears. In the back there, I have some uh, sorry for my scratches. I always have scratches on my hands. This is a burnt because I use a uh, hot uh, uh, glue gun for gluing those, so I burn myself. This is a teddy bear, gigantic teddy bears. Then I have a normal. I I don't know. Maybe let's go somewhere where I have a decent light, like like here. And you see inside there that you have some uh, golden teddy bear, a pink teddy bear, white, orange, and blue teddy bear. And also here some uh, micro LED there. So those will be I was saying I will I can now I can light them up. And uh, finally, uh, I still have to mark somehow uh, what what you will find inside the stands. I will have a space here and there to write teddy bears and here uh, toss the ring. Okay, uh, you have noticed that I haven't used uh, some prices and uh, some currency because it is not defined okay guys maybe euros maybe dollars usd maybe australian dollars uh and i will stop there maybe yen i don't know guys this is victorian even victorian era uh, in australia too and always i that guys i can approach i can get further and then i can approach another time and it is still 
hide it guys then i painted there guys okay but this is this will be for the final uh, final recap uh, let me start working on the north pole section there
final recap of part 22 and this will also be the last final recap of this 2022 series or season if you prefer. No part 23 so no more final recaps. I must admit that I am a little sad right now guys but next season is in just a few months and as I already threatened you some hours ago, my next post will be my final 2022 Christmas Village video. It is in just a few days, maximum a week, 20-25 minutes maximum, because I don't want to exaggerate with my always long video. And then, and then I also must confess that uh, Last season, I posted very few videos during the off-season. I will try to amend myself for this 2022 slash initial part of 2023 season. Final recap. Let's start with the North Pole section up uh, there. Uh, I had some problems. I planned uh, some, uh, some perimeter that was this round and then ending there but i have obviously some space problems trying to um, put also the new elf lane little elf lane buildings there so i had to add one more section on the right for me no yes on the left here to accommodate the uh, santa's swing there with some path with for jo um, for uh, joining the reindeers. And uh, so I will need to work a little more on that section before posting my video. And I have already started making uh, something, guys. Maybe I will show you. Uh, I will not use as last season my uh, sand uh, covered with uh, white paint as a snow no i will go guys with that little thing there i modeled different types of uh, uh, frozen um what can i say frozen uh, path frozen terrains and i will place all around them this is a spiky one uh, just remember that this is this is still a steampunk Christmas village, so why not be also dangerous in Christmas Wonderland, in Santa's Wonderland, in North Pole section. I have modern different types of them. Let me show you another one. This one is another one. I still need to print a lot of them, but it is for the final video. Uh, let's talk here about this pavement that you have just seen me using. I always recycled those pavement. I don't like this is a seamless, uh, seamless um, pattern. Seamless is that you can join left and side repeatedly and you will not see that much difference. I always recycled that path and it is uh, known as the best path, as uh, the best pattern, sorry, for a pavement for a Christmas village. Many, many, many uh, out there use it, but I don't print them on normal paper. As always, I print them on, on 250 grams uh, carton paper in order to preserve them for next season or so. Sometimes I cut here and there. Uh, I don't need to be as regular as you think because anyway, I will cover everything with my snow, guys. And it has been so difficult to um, to get those little bags there. Even if you are, we are in Italy, it is written in English, snow, Christmas decoration. It is imported from China, guys from um, uh, Northern Italy uh, company there. But this is pure plastic, guys, okay? Uh, pure plastic because this is 100%, sorry, you aren't seeing that. This is 100% uh, 
uh, polyethylene so it is absolutely all plastic shredded uh, in this way and i think this will be my uh, always my preferred uh, artificial snow for my christmas village even if, even if just a two three years ago i can find i i, I would have find those bags in almost every um Christmas department here around me now just one has them on has them on catalog so it is a very rare item um, even more rare than that figure in there so each time I hope I will find them for next season and last season I've used 12 of them 12 of them those are 100 grams uh, it is, yes 100 grams uh, polyethylene ethylene, um, uh, artificial snow and last season I used 12, 12 of them this season I think I will use much more of them then I completed also all the street lamps here for the first section here for the first layer in here uh, joining those two and then also here uh, I have some more grooves there because I also connected the, the power cords from each and every building I have in here. Uh, also the pretzel uh, little stand there. What I generally do with uh, street lamps, obviously, maybe I will show you uh, just a second. I will switch off all the lights and switch on this little one i was saying that as you can oh sorry too quick as you can see the street lamps there allow me to get lights from just half each section there so from the starting point there up to the middle of each level and this for every and single one of the uh, street lamps like that also the newest one in front of Poseidon etc uh, and uh, so what about the next half section let me switch on once again the light and Fiat Lux, uh, as ancient Latins would have said. Okay, full lights. What I generally tend to do, yes, obviously you have the uh, lights from the buildings that they are very, very, very not insufficient, not sufficient for, uh, not enough for bringing lights everywhere. But I generally tend to go this way. Obviously here I have the, um, the 20,000 leagues under the sea for more street lamps, but I generally do one here, then one there on the other border that will bring lights to half the section here. But as it is on a, on a higher level, it will also bring lights to the other half of this level here down below. So all the entire level will be under the light. Then one here and one there. And when possible, I will go with taller ones in the middle here between this street lamp here and this other street lamp there. Then some more here. I, I will have, essentially, I, will, I think I will have a big problem because this distance here is and gigantic for just those two street lamps there. I will need to find another way. Yes, that building is full of LED, so it will bring lights here in that corner there. But then I will have a problem illuminating this little section here. And I'm trying to find another solution. It has to still a big amount of work, but in just a few days I will be able to to complete hit oops sorry this is not supposed to be there but here down there the blacksmith in front of his blacksmith shop 
uh, then one street lamp here, one here, one there, and in the middle here, one other street lamps, and etc. etc. For next level two, here I will have a big uh, source of light with all those Frankie lights flickering, lay, um, not flickering, flashing uh, RGB uh, LED. Then the same solution for next level and so on and so on. This is, I always did my, uh, my uh, street lamps, my light for the, uh, for my layouts. Never use spotlights, as I've said many, many times, and so on. I will try to get a, um, an harmonious uh, light, light system all around. The band, I've already introduced you. I have the time to paint the stairs, so four layers of uh, obviously black wash, but this one is different. I wanted something reflecting, so the black wash is, is a mix of water, black, and iridescent silver. Then five layers of gray from darkest one to uh, almost white one, and nothing else. Usual technique, usual painting technique. You haven't noticed, maybe, but it's correct that I point you out that the last building still to be reviewed is there since the beginning of this part 22. Uh, but uh, half the review is done, I will need to do the other half of the review. What I completed, I completed with the uh, grandma there and some little trees in front of uh, of that um, uh, building and if I'm correct it is home for Christmas yes it is home for home for Christmas uh, building there uh, and I will need to add some more uh, street lamps somewhere then here guys I put in place my little new uh, bread and roll little stand sincerely next season i will change the led because they are orange i don't like them that much yellow yes but those are three tremendously ideous orange led i like white i like yellowish but orange too orange no because orange will distort the perception of the colors in front of the camera. Big problem here for the street lamps. I will have this section here possible to dig some holes because I always dig holes for the base of the street lamps for the base and the base is made by three very heavy uh, uh, washers and then I fix them using three um, florist uh, pins like I always uh, do okay here i was saying problems i already marked a path for one of the street lamps another one maybe here but here in the middle i don't have a thickness allowing me to dig for some uh, street lamps so i will most probably go with a very tall one here in the corner as i did last season with the, the a futuristic building that i had there with 42 centimeters tall uh, street lamps that will bring lights everywhere. The higher your street lamps they are, the most surface the light will cover. It is a, it is a simple physics low, low guys. Uh, all lights always project a cone of light, not a ray of light because this is not a laser. Those are not la laser or laser, but, but they are simply LED. And an LED, if it don't diffuse the light, it will project a cone of light. So the cone of light major is the distance uh, from the uh, from the floor. Much more light it, they will bring to the scene. But obviously, one <laughs> giant street lamp here. One meter tall will be bring like almost everywhere, but it is uh, unrealistic. But sometimes I have no me no other means that having that. I've already told you about the two boots there, the two stands there, 
uh, still need to print on some paper, some teddies and uh, um, toss the ring. Then for Mr. Cannonball, Mr. Balletman there, I also modeled and printed uh, a useless um, mountain, a useless amount of uh, cannonballs that will never be used because it is, it's in the cannonball. But uh, I had uh, an empty space there and used it, so I added that little uh, detail there. It's just uh, one hour of printing and one s sphere multiplied and then you, I, I don't know, uh, there is a very famous uh, um, pie called Profiterol and <laughs> it remember me some Profiterol there. If you don't wa know what I am talking about, just Google about Profiterol and prepare your uh, glycemic level to uh, go up, up, up. For the uh, for the, uh, let me just wait for a second. I forgot a very important thing. Okay, I'm here. Sorry, guys. Uh, last week when I told you that I wanted some hedgerows there to, because I didn't want to add some more fences or anything else because those are already too good looking for ruining the scene. I had planned to uh, use death hedgerows there that are impossible to see right now or even the other model like that. But they are too regular, guys. Uh, I, I, I realized that I made a big mistakes in designing those ones because they are too regular and not very well suited in here. So I redesigned it there some new kind of hedgerows. I have a short one here, as you can see, and then a longest version here that has some problem, obviously. Where is my finger? There. This is a longest version because this has a little problem because it's not very well suited for um, this little path here. Anyway, uh, I'm not perfect. I always told you guys that then painted with brown and three dif two different shades of green and then some yellow uh, this is i inspired myself by with some uh vines like yes vines and those are edge rows with uh with the resemblance of some vines i i think I, i'm i don't want to be to make a big mistake yes vines Vines, uh, trees, uh, not trees, but vines were uh, raisins. Okay, grapes. Okay, f grapes. And then, so I modeled them. They are very different from one from the other. And I think this is bringing a good looking effort here. It's typical monks to have uh, such a beautiful gardens, very cured gardens. And this is also a mini fences, not preventing you from admiring the monks and the uh, everything is happening yes i still need to paint that container there but i will manage there uh, for the for the two buildings that still aren't connected the two elf lanes mini uh, buildings i still need to make some power cords to connect them to the ac adapter it is uh, another task I will need to complete here. Nothing has changed. No, I don't think so. Uh, the rotating three ring six circus is working. I retested it just two days ago. I hope that the Jakob ladder is still working. I haven't tested it since last time. I think two two months ago. I think yes, one or two months ago. From the other side, nothing has changed, guys. Uh, I've already shown you everything. So a few more things to to add and then complete with the fences, etc. <sighs> yes, I know that you are wondering what is under there. Sorry, guys. I'm a bad 
person, so I will not tell you anything. Just one thing, and I repeat myself, it is also lighted inside the cavern, guys. And it's not an activity, guys. I promise you, it's not an activity. Okay, guys, I'm sorry, uh, but uh, I, I love Christmas villages, but I'm not a religious person. Sorry, don't, don't, don't shoot at me for that, but it's like that. I respect everyone and every religion. I don't care All those monks and just one little red battle priest. Okay, I started my adventure with a J at my side and I thought it was correct to end this adventure with JJ at my side. Sorry, don't hit me, JJ, but it is time for you to think about your retirement because next season I will need a new companion. Uh, <laughs> I must admit, guys, that I hate endings and I am a little emotional right now. Sorry for that. It has been a longer six months and a very difficult <laughs> season for me. You have noticed if maybe because I've exaggerated with the dimension and with trying to add too much things, maybe because I'm aging too quickly, maybe both of them together, but it is what it is. And will I use once again the 3D printers? Absolutely, because they helped me uh, modeling some new props, some new elements that otherwise will have uh, meant not completing correctly this village. I know it is not yet completed. <coughs> Sorry, my voice is very emotional. Uh, but uh, they really helped me. Thank you for all your supports, all your comments. They pushed me towards the end of this season, of, of this tutorial season. Oh, you still consider it if a tutorial with all the techniques I've tried to improve, to implement new techniques and new will come for next season. Uh, and next season I already promised you to be much more present, but I don't know yet my next <laughs> village team. Maybe you can suggest them uh, it to me guys and then the most commented ones with the most commented ones, I will do a poll, maybe, yes, why not, please, suggest me something, something doable, <laughs> if you know something that will be good for my abilities, for what I, I, I can do, for what I know uh, right now, but even if you push me towards the known, I will try to get it done, sorry once again for my voice. Last time you will see me with this 2022 coat and sad, very sad moment, guys. So please don't forget to subscribe, comment and give big thumbs up. Thank you for watching. Thank you for bearing my absolutely awful English and see you next season for a tutorial series. Bye.